Cody in the Morning, WSM. This is Coffee Country and Cody. Hey, welcome to the Egg Tough House studio on the Grand Ole Opry Plaza. I'm Bill Cody. That is Kelly Sutton. That is not Charlie Mattos. That is Zach Minnett. Charlie Mattos is on the beach in Florida enjoying absolutely perfect panhandle weather. Beautiful weather in the panhandle. Andy, That's right. Andy Nye is our studio director doing acrobatics to get our monitor working right sure. now. <laughs> so if Andy falls into the shot at any moment, you'll know why. It's going to be fine. <laughs> I have total faith in her. <laughs> and Jeff Roberts is in master control. Rock solid Roberts is upstairs and getting it done here all over the world now on television at circlecountry.com. You can link to your favorite streaming platform and uh, you can also, of course, just watch it there. And if you're listening, of course, it's WSM Radio at 6.50 a.m. and WSMRadio.com. Kelly mm. Sutton, Daryl Mosley is coming to see us with a new album that I just love. I've been playing it over and over. And if you went out in my car right now and hit eject on my CD player, this would pop out. It's a thing called Long Days and Short Stories, and he is a Ooh. master. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so he, he's going to join us, play live, and we'll feature music from the album here in just a little bit. Okay, well, we're also talking about what's going on entertainment-wise. We have Keith Urban now going to be headlining Nashville New Year's Eve's Big Bash. So we'll tell you more about that and how you can come and party with us as we ring in 2025. We've got more on that concert for Carolina. That's Luke Combs and Eric Church coming together to help the hurricane victims in North Carolina and East Tennessee. And we have a new collaboration. Jelly Roll with Hey Dude. So if you like the Hey Dude shoes, I'll tell you more about how you can get your hands on the limited edition Jelly Roll Hey Dudes. And we're going to the Opry with Jelly Roll here in just a little bit too. Okay. Uh, Zach, for those of you listening on radio and just joined us on television, mentioned that Vanderbilt and its victory and in its celebration tearing down the goalpost, eventually throwing it into the Cumberland River, right. had to pay Alabama, yeah. whom they beat, that's the rule in the SEC is if you get fined for your fans rushing the field, the fine actually goes to the opponent. So dumb. So Alabama lost the game, and then they got a $100,000 check from Vanderbilt. <laughs> and I see Justin Moore, and this is my dirt coming. So he's a huge Arkansas Razorback fan. Oh, yeah. They beat Tennessee, did the same thing. It's the second time in the same season. They have to pay a $250,000 yeah. fine. <laughs> Coffee Country and Cody welcomes a longtime friend. Daryl Mosley is back in studio with us, and I always love seeing you, man, and especially when you sit down with a guitar in your hand. Well, it's good to be back. I, I, it's the first time I've been in the new place. It, it gives me the vibe of those times when you move from the van to the tour bus. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I hadn't thought about We got to, can we steal that line? That's all <laughs> yours. We finally got out of the Sprinter van. Look out. That's exactly it. But you know, wow. when you get the tour bus, stuff also has a way of like having little hiccups here and there. So we still have a little hiccups. We're figuring it out. Oh, that's all yeah. part of the experience, Kelly. That's right. That's exactly right. What was it that you used to say? Uh, Pete Rones, Peter Rowan said when he was with the Bluegrass Boys, <laughs> said Bill Monroe's bus was called the Bluegrass Breakdown, which is what it did all the time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. I heard a gospel singer one time, they said, the Lord sends you a ministry and the devil sends you a bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot great. of truth in that too. <laughs> well, Daryl Mosley is here with long days and short stories and a, a, a quote from you that said, uh, I'm not a singer who uh, writes, uh, you said, I'm not a singer who writes songs. I'm a songwriter who sings. And once I, I, I kind of had that epiphany, you know, from my whole life I'd been singing and that was kind of, I mean, I got more work because I could sing and, you know, but I was writing along the way. But when I finally realized that the songs were the most important to me and, you know, it just, it, the perspective change made all, a huge difference in everything, in my career and everything. And so when did you start playing and singing and writing songs? I mean, were you one of these child prodigies? No, not a prodigy. I mean, I started as a kid, you know, started singing in church, started writing songs. I was probably 15 or 16. I was singing out at Loretta Lynn's Ranch and, you know, dreaming of a music career. And, and, and Loretta was the very first one to ever point me to songwriting. You know, she said, darling, you've got to learn to write. I'll never forget it. She said, the, a lot of folks can sing them, but the good ones can write them too. <laughs> and so at her encouragement, I started trying to figure out songwriting. Did you audition for her? No, it was, they, they did a little thing called a campfire show where somebody would entertain for the, the, the folks who were there vacationing, you know, and 
they ended up with a night where their singer didn't show up and my sister was working in the office and she's like, Hey, my brother sings. And I just stumbled into it. You <laughs> and you know? had your first manager. I did. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What did you play? Do you remember? Like, cause that had to be a lot of pressure. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm now on the spot. You know, I mean, after the years of singing and standing up in church singing, I wasn't really nervous. And of course, I mean, I, I lived and breathed country music back then. So I knew all the songs. So it was, it wasn't hard. It was a great beginning to you know you're to sing for 30 or 40 people and learn how to to entertain how to pace a show how to you know create a set list you know it was a it was a i couldn't have asked for a better opportunity to, for a place to start mm. the osborne brothers figure prominently in your early life yeah i mean i got a chance to work with them for a number of years and 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 it was great you know that i had admired them for so long and got to know them really really well and and it's still hard for me to believe I'm living on a planet that doesn't include them anymore. That's hard. Yeah. They were, they were precious people. To me. I know it makes you emotional. But it's also what brought you, as you sit here and look out from our Acuff House studio at the entrance to the Grand Ole Opry House, where Kelly Sutton will be back tonight hosting. Oh, I might right. got a Wednesday night show. It starts at 7 o'clock. But that's how you came to the Opry for the first time. Was it the Ryman for you first? First time I ever played was the Ryman. And, you know, and I had all those years playing at the Opry. And, you know, and it was a dream come true to get a chance to, you know, I'll never forget the very first night at the Ryman. I'm, I'm nervous as everything. And little Jimmy Dickens is standing off to the side. And he's looking at me, and I'm thinking, <laughs> you know. And he walks over, and he says, if you don't start none, there won't be none. Oh, what? I'm like, what did I do? And he busted out laughing. <laughs> he, he just saw low-hanging fruit and just went for it, you know. And he could smell rookie, man, couldn't he? Yeah. he could, a mile away. And, uh, but we laughed and we became friends, and it was, it was, a, it was a great time. Well, from this album, Long Days and Short Stories, you tell the most wonderful story in three minutes and seven seconds of Jesse James and your hometown and a part of his history that I did not know included Waverly, Tennessee. Yeah. You know, I've always, I've tried to include one song on every album that I write about, specifically about our town. And back in, I guess, 1877, the James gang and the Younger Brothers attempted to rob a bank in Minnesota and things went horribly wrong yeah, Northfield Bank yes yeah. well so in order to to lay low for a while the James boys came to Tennessee Frank came to Nashville Jesse and his wife Z moved to Waverly and they rented a little farm and they lived under the alias of Mr. and Mrs. J.D. Howard and you know they were kind of local celebrities people kind of knew who they were but it was you know it was kind of on the DL and and you know, they would have parties at their house and they went to church and this went on for a couple of years you said he spoke at church from time yeah to time. he would speak and then so they would <laughs> sing and uh, they had uh, they had stillborn twins while they were there and but then one night they just up and I guess maybe the money ran out but they got up and moved to back to Missouri and and to my knowledge never came back but they were there for a couple of years and what was his wife's name Z just Z-E-E? -E? Z-E-E, -E. yeah. Huh. And you said the twins were buried there in Waverly and remained there until recent years when they uh, exhumed them and moved them to the family place in Missouri? Is yeah, right? the, uh, the James family, they actually had a, a kind of a ceremony where they came and removed what remains there were and, and moved them to the plot up in the, in the family cemetery in St. Joe. Well, he put it to music. It's an incredible story, and it's our friend Daryl Mosley this morning. Again, the name of the album is Long Days and Short Story, Darkest Hour, offering hope again from Eric Church in my pick of the week. Kelly Sutton, good morning. Well, Eric Church and Luke Combs are working together. They've now put together a benefit concert. It's going to be happening. It's Concert for Carolina. Both of them, of course, from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Both of them saying they wanted to do something. So collectively, they have come together along with Billy Strings and James Taylor. Many other friends are going to be on this bill as well. Uh, they said, you know what? If we come together, we can make a difference. They are going to be doing this again at the uh, big stadium i wanted to say amphitheater bank but of it's america this, yes right? bank of america stadium I in think that's charlotte the, yeah the carolina panthers play there yeah, yeah and apparently the owners have donated it so it is without cost that they're going to be able to use that but they talked about it together on good morning america here's what luke had to say i called um you know i know how much our state means uh to him and to myself and i knew that that he would be willing to do whatever it took to to help out and i had this crazy idea to you know uh, to do a show at bank of america and and uh the teppers that were gracious enough to to get us that date and um donate the stadium to us and i think it's gonna be a really special night 
It is going to be a very special night. It's happening October the 26th. If you want to get tickets, you can get them. They're on sale. Eric and Luke, both the headliners. And as we mentioned before, James Taylor not growing up in North Carolina, but moved there when he was a teenager and really mm -hmm. credits that whole area for making such an impact on him. So we've got James Taylor, Billy Strings, and so many more that are going to be added to the bill later on. How would you like to be in that house when he does going to Carolina I know. in my mind. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be incredible. Talking about the great sing along of all time Absolutely. in the state of North Carolina. That Absolutely. Just be it. <laughs> well, it was also announced Keith Urban is back Nashville New Year's Eve, the big bash. It's going to be happening of course December 31st. And if you want to be a part of it, it is free to attend. Just make your plans to get here on New Year's Eve. Keith has done this. Oh gosh, I've lost track of how many times. He did it for years in a row. I think there were 3 maybe 4 years in a row. And then he took a little break and CBS came in and they blew it up and made it even bigger so now it is five hours live on CBS and they went back to him and they said remember that thing you were doing there for a few years you want to come back and do it again and he said mm, okay sure so he's going to be headlining <laughs> and hosting it Jelly Roll and Kane Brown also going to be on the bill and so many others what they do and I'll let you in a little uh, behind the scenes they will tap out every concert venue around Nashville about two weeks beforehand. And they'll have Miranda Lambert and so many others that show up and she'll probably play at her own place, which is what she did last year, but they'll do a set, they'll record it, and then they play all of that back. So what you see that night, most of it is already pre-taped. They will have some live performances that will be at other venues around Nashville, but the majority of it is going to be pre-taped. The live portion will be right there at Bicentennial Mall. And you can be there for all of that live so if you want to come get a package stay the night it's free to get in you can watch it all happen on cbs if you don't want to get here and be there live do you have to lock the gate as you go out are you the last one out because you're like the first no. one there i am the first one there <laughs> and you I, open the gate i am there i get there and i get to introduce the mayor and i get to welcome everyone to the city and do so much just uh, of the housekeeping and let them know what they can expect and then when we open up the gates, I said it is like the running of the bulls. I mean, they come from the back and just flood in to get to the very front of I the stage. I think if you open the gate, you need to be the janitor and the one to close the gate. No, I usually oh. peace out before it's all over with. <laughs> I'll give the keys to Keith. He remembers how to lock it's up. It's hard for an early morning girl to stay up till 1 a.m. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, we want to say congratulations to Luke Bryan scoring his 31st number one hit. This is for Love You, Miss You, Mean It. 31. Can you believe it? He put a caption on Instagram and he said, thank you to everyone who made this my 31st number one song. And he also said in a separate note to country radio, every song on Mind of a Country Boy album tells something different about the phase of life I am in. It is fun seeing which ones are connecting with your listeners. Here's to 31 number one songs. So congratulations to Luke Bryan. And as we mentioned yesterday, there are 30 or more corn mazes that have the likeness of Luke Bryan. So if you want to get lost in his eyes or ears or guitar or name, there's a lot of them out there. If you're doing a corn maze, chances are it might be Luke Bryan's face. Hey Dude is teaming up with our friend Jelly Roll. They're going to be doing a collaboration. If you are not familiar with Hey Dude shoes, I highly recommend them. They're super, super comfortable. Yesterday we talked about crocoons, which are crocs that are covered in a raccoon uh, pelt. Well, this is nothing like that. This is Jelly Roll's Hey Dude shoe. They're white. Uh, they have some, uh, I guess it's like his logo from Beautifully Broken that's on the toe of it. Limited edition. If you are interested in getting these, they're not going to be easy to score. You got to go to heydude.com and register your interest in purchasing a pair of Jelly Roll's <laughs> custom Hey Dude shoes. So if you're interested, go get in on that list. And coming up next time in Entertainment Headlines, 15 foods that you thought originated in the United States, but in fact, they did not. It's a great backstory. Here on Coffee Country and Cody, Kelly Sutton Entertainment. We're going to wrap it up on the television side after a break. This is WSM's Coffee Country and Cody. And uh, fresh off a of performance at Basement East last night, David Lunning just sat down with us. How'd it go? We treat you well? Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it was actually it was actually at the basement, but it was, oh, it was okay. yeah yeah. Okay. But it was a uh, it was great. It was really uh, I I love playing here in Nashville. 
And have you played here a lot over the years? Uh, well, re- uh, well, recently uh, I was here for like the Americana Fest uh-huh. and, and did that, and then um, played in played at Basement last night, and then um, it's actually been maybe like a minute since I've been back in Nashville, but it was b- before COVID. But now I'm here, and I, I I wish I could just be here all the time. Yeah, Northern <laughs> California's home. Yeah, I was reading I, I, a, a little town called Forestville. Is yeah, that right? yeah, in, yeah. In, in Kelly's favorite part of the world, Sonoma County, wine oh, country. Let yeah. me tell you, that's fantastic up there. I it's can understand beautiful. why you want to stay. I mean, it's nice here, but we don't have vineyards, so <laughs> and we don't have an ocean. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> and hopefully, we won't for a while because that oh would gosh, be yeah. uh, not good. <laughs> so, did you grow up there? Is that where you? Yeah. Spent all your time. Yeah, I grew up there. Um, I, I basically lived in little towns, um, including Forestville, which is like, I lived actually right by the Russian River. Um, and uh, it's, been, it's been an amazing place to grow up, especially for obviously the scenery. And, and actually I, I did live in a place um, where there was like a, a street right next to mine that had, I don't know, 14 wineries on it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, it's yeah. pretty classic. I I don't know, but <laughs> what you know the funniest thing about that though is that I don't really drink wine, so I was like, this is lovely, but <laughs> not my scene. No. Yeah. <laughs> the interesting thing to me is how many people go there and they do the bike tours and then oh, they yeah. go do a tasting and then they get on a bike and go to another winery <laughs> yeah. and they do a tasting and I'm like, everything about this seems extremely dangerous. This yeah. cannot yeah. end well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and they're all, and they're all biking on roads with no no like bike lanes or anything right. like that. So yeah, yeah, it's it's dangerous. So you were just dodging <laughs> and weaving all the tourists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so great. the yeah. basement in Nashville last night. You're off to Memphis tomorrow night. Chattanooga on Saturday night. So yeah. you're making the Tennessee run. Yeah. As a part of support for the brand new album Lessons, and I read a quote in the Press Democrat hometown newspaper. Uh, for some reason, I got it in my head that I wanted to record this one in a barn. <laughs> some of my favorite records were recorded in barns. It's true. It's <laughs> Give true. Give us the backstory on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> like Neil Young, like Harvest was recorded in a barn, and and um, and one of my favorite artists, uh, Gregory Allen Isakoff, um, has recorded. Uh, I think first two records in a barn and i just i just loved that idea and well lee von helm comes to mind the, the, yeah, absolutely the woodstock the absolutely. barn in woodstock yeah. yeah that's maybe the most famous barn in yeah, music yeah. That, yeah true true yeah. um so whose barn did we use i, th- I saw petaluma came into the picture right, right yeah so it's a it's a friend of mine um doug and he's got he's got a, a private studio out there but it was it was funny because i got a call from uh my my friend and guitar player dave sampson and he was like Hey man, I know you've been looking for a barn, and I think I might have found it. And so I, I go, uh, I go and like check it out, and it's like this. It's the most like it's the most amazing studio. It, I would say it's the most amazing studio in the shape of a barn. It was, uh, but it was like the all the beams and everything were actually from a barn in eighteen in like the eighteen hundreds in New York. And then they like moved them all, moved the whole barn over to Petaluma, California. So from one coast to the other, literally. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And then so I, I was like, I, it took me like three seconds to be like, yeah, this is it. This is, so I'm here. <laughs> so it's not a barn where there's like cattle underneath or there's anything. There's no cattle. Okay. It's bougie. Yeah, yeah. It's cattle, a bougie barn. Ca- ca- yeah. Cattle at the bottom. Studio at the top. That's it. <laughs> but, but actually they have, they have like where the doors are, like there's big glass doors and those would be um, where, like the the, uh, the like horse and whatever thing would come through with the hay, and so like they would come. Th- there's like, and there's even like the the rope um, with the hook on it for oh, like the really? hay bale still in there, and yeah. Oh, that's it's cool. cool. It's very. It was amazing. That's very cool. Well, lessons you chose this from the album to the title track of the album. Yeah, you had a lot of different titles to pick from, obviously, but you chose this one. Yeah, I you know I think um, this album to me has been a lot very very personal. Um, and it's probably my most personal record, um, and to me it's like that song kind of like uh, encapsulated 
um, everything that was happening and going on with me. And, and so, um, and that's also why I titled the record uh, mm -hmm. Lessons. Um, and Lessons was also actually one of the newer songs, um, newest songs to go onto the record. But then it was like, oh, well, this is, this is, it just, it makes everything cohesive. And, so you kind of built around that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. More Coffee, Country, and Cody is on WSN. And our conversation and live performance with David Lunning continues. Lessons is the new album, and you guys were discussing the video yeah, as we laughing. listened to the song, and there was a backstory. Very cute little kitten. <laughs> I was like, wait, was this a prop? Was this a paid actor? Or give us the backstory oh, yeah. of the cat. Uh, I mean, I guess, I, guess, uh, I guess he's kind of paid. Okay. He, he gets lots of lots of food. Hey, the union will yeah. be in touch, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no kittens were harmed in the making of this video, but you have two kittens at home. Yeah, two kittens, uh, Theo and and Elephant. Elephant's a temporary name, but um, yeah, and they're amazing. And actually, it's it's kind of a it's kind of bittersweet because I'm I'm out on the road, and when I left, they're they're very tiny, and, and I can see videos now of them, and they're like. They're 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 bigger now. Uh, <laughs> it happens that way with kids too. I'm told yeah. by artists. Yeah. You, you can't go. Hey, when did you get to be a teenager? Yeah. You know. Do you buy them things and bring it home for them? Um, you well, yeah, my 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 lady does. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, you're on the road though. Like they yeah. might want some souvenirs from Nashville. You know what? You're totally Grand right. Grand souvenirs for the kittens. I should. <laughs> I should do that. Take it home I will to do the that. kids. That's I will. right. I will. Okay. Take them a couple of goo goo clusters. <laughs> they'll, cute. they'll thank you for it. They might have a dolly toy over there or something <laughs> that you could take. All right. So, Perfect. Uh, as a part of your backstory, you went to the Berkeley School of Music in Boston. Mm -hmm. and I did. Studied film scoring of all I, things. I did. And yes. piano is your first instrument. Yeah. Yeah. So, but John Prine comes into your life at some point in here and really yeah. changes things for you. Yeah. You know, I um, it was kind of a. I was always obsessed with um, how music affects people. And I think that that was one of the reasons that I was so drawn to film scoring is because I was like, music, you know, changes the film. Like whatever oh, the music absolutely. is, you know, I actually. And I did like this, I actually, in high school, I did like my senior thesis on, on um, I like, I did a film score of uh, The Red Balloon, which is like a French movie. And, um, I did like one like really really happy and then I did one very very scary and just and then actually showed it to a bunch of people and got their reactions and stuff and it was wildly different. Um, but anyway, so I was I was so fascinated with how music affects people, um, and it was only when I, I like and I actually to be honest I never was like very into uh, Americana music or folk music or country music. I didn't really know about it really uh -huh. and. Um, yeah, but then I discovered John Prine, and I was like, oh, my God, these songs make me feel so much. So, and I was like, oh, my God, this is, this is unbelievably uh, just. If there's one John Prine song, what would it be if you just had to pull one out of that catalog? Just one? Um, do, do I have to pick just one? Pick two. Okay. Um, let's see. Probably Souvenirs. Um, I'm going to pick three. Hello in there. And, uh, I mean, paradise is, he, yeah. he can't, he I thought you were going to pull Sam stone, but Sam stone is an amazing song. I mean, yeah. like you can't really go that's wrong. What? Like that's <laughs> no, like, because I'm right there with you in my love for John. Prime. Yeah. Thank Fantastic. you. Thanks for getting up early and coming in, man. Of great, course. Great to Thanks meet you. for having me. Yeah. David Lunning, L U N I N G. You'll find him on the web, davidlunning.com. Hernando's Hideaway in Memphis, that is tomorrow night and then Saturday night, live at the Pines, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Brand new music, Lessons from David Lunning. Universal question, is there life out there? You're on Coffee Country and Cody, Reba, a member of the Opry family, of course, in the Country Music Hall of Fame and the Opry tonight, Kelly Sutton, you're hosting the Wednesday night show. And you've got a house full of guests there. I do. T. Graham Brown's going to be there. We've got Carter Faith. Crystal Gale is coming in. Rhonda Vincent and the Rage. Daly and Vincent will be there. Maggie Rose, Dylan Marlowe, and the one and only Mr. Don Schlitz will be Tom there. Tomorrow night, I will be there with oh. Larry Wayne Gatlin and yes. the Opry Country Classics. And you know who we're going to spotlight? Who? Gorgeous. Lori Morgan. Oh, 
She's just gorgeous. She's just gorgeous. Yes. Lori Morgan's in the spotlight. Andy Griggs, Twitty, and Lynn. Of course, that's Michael Twitty and Taylor Lynn. Yeah. The grandchildren of Conway and Loretta. And, um, of course, the Gatlin brothers will be there doing their hits as well as part of Opera Country Classics. It's birthday weekend. Don't want to forget that before you get started in entertainment. Birthday weekend. Mm -hmm. I've got a Friday night Opry, two shows on Saturday, an Opry Community Day day day-long event on Sunday to celebrate. And And a day-long event on Saturday as well. We're going to have plaza parties out here beginning at noon. So if you're over here at the mall or the hotel, you can come by and we'll have live music all day leading up to those two Opry shows. And then again all day Sunday for Community Day. We have food trucks. Do we yep. think yes. food trucks? Mm-hmm. there will be plenty of food. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that, I know you're going to do some food yes. stuff in this segment. International Beer and Pizza Day today. Oh, cheers. And uh, it's also Submarine Hoagie Hero Grinder Day. What do you call it? A, a sub. A sub? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's... Especially if it comes from Publix, pub sub. Oh, I didn't know that's what they call them. Ooh, the pub sub is delicious. Yes, well, Zach we, knows. Look, mm-hmm. he's, he's... We're on. getting a new Publix close to well I, actually we are kroger people Uh-oh. by default to mm-hmm. a certain degree we've been kroger shoppers forever but uh it's the only choice we have in white house which Correct. is the community closest to us and we're getting a Publix. i don't know exactly when but soon can't hide money yeah they're paving the parking lot <laughs> That's nice. and putting stripe in it so it can't be long now <laughs> and the it's, light at the intersection i noticed it was on yesterday it was oh, working this so is can't a fantastic, be long fantastic fantastic question to put out to everybody out there maybe we'll post this on social media for everyone to chime in in just a little bit do you have a grocery store that you are loyal to because i gotta be honest with you i fluctuate like if i know kroger has something on sale I'm going to Kroger. If I have to do a really big haul, if we haven't done a grocery haul in a long time, Mm -hmm. I'm going to Kroger. If it's just a couple things, I'm going to Publix. Because Publix, you know, their prices are a little higher, but I also really like their stuff. (laughs) And Rebecca's deal is she gets like household items and that sort of thing. Yeah. She gets at Walmart. Oh, sure. Yeah, no. And then the grocery stuff she gets at Kroger. Yeah. And there are certain things I, I can only get at Costco. So I'm interested to see what happens once she has an opportunity to go to Publix if she switches loyalty oh, I will or continues you. to split loyalty. Publix is real nice. Yeah. Oh, they have wonderful stores. Real nice. Yeah. Like the Cadillac of, a, of the stores. You go in there and they're real nice to you. The aisles are nice and wide. They say, can I help you to your car? You're like, well, sure. Yeah. You can do that. That's nice. And they have a little button that says, no tipping, please. Can't give them a tip. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So just putting that out there for everybody. Listen, we'll know when Bill finds the Publix because he'll get addicted to those pub subs, pub subs. and then the clothes won't fit anymore. <laughs> the pub subs and their fried chicken. Holy yeah. schmoly. Some of my favorite ever. I mean, if you can, but you got to get there early because it sells out. Their fried chicken sells out. <laughs> Not even kidding. All right. That's the perfect segue. Let's talk about all of the foods that we kind of claim were made here in the U.S. And then we actually dig around and figure out, mm, not really. First up, fried chicken. Fried chicken just feels like it should have been made here in the South first, right? Not true. According to BBC.com, fried chicken originated in Scotland. Of all the places. Uh, You asked me earlier and I guessed Africa. Yeah. Fried chicken in Scotland. Um, Let's hop over to apple pie. We've all heard the whole, you know, American is apple pie. Uh Have any clue where you think it came from? Apple pie. Yeah. We didn't. Have, you mean the Native Americans had not discovered apple pie? Apple pie. The when first, we first got apple here? pie was actually on record coming from another location. Any? Take a guess. You got a guess, Zach? Canada. That's a great guess. What Bill? is? It? What is it? England. That makes sense, yeah. right? I mean, if you think about it, yeah. yeah. They said uh, it actually began in England, according to Smithsonian Magazine. The pie was a combination of apples, figs, raisins, pears, and saffron. Well, leave it to them to put figs in something that we didn't need figs in, but there you go. <laughs> ice cream. Now, this one I just for sure thought was ours. We laid claim to ice cream at least, right? Any guesses where you think it actually came from? Cream, ice cream. This one threw me. South I, America? That's a great guess, but no. I'm guessing it's a warm weather climate, though. So I would think South America. But yeah. I, I could, let's go back to Africa. China. Really? Yes. They say the early days of ice cream, it wasn't full of flavors like Rocky Road and cookies and cream. Instead, history.com says those living in China enjoyed a frozen drink made from watered down buffalo milk. And they turned that into ice cream. 
crazy. I know. So the one that we talked about earlier, peanut how, butter. How do you say moose tracks in Chinese? Moose tracks. <laughs> um, the one that we talked about earlier, peanut butter. We all were taught this in grade school. That it George was Washington Carver, George Washington Tuskegee Carver. Institute. Correct. Came up with peanut butter, but maybe not so much. It was first introduced in the U.S. at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904. But the National Peanut Board says there's evidence that ancient South American Incas were the first to grind peanuts and make them into peanut butter. How about that? Don't my, mess with the peanut board. They know what they're talking granddaughter about. granddaughter is studying all things Aztec, Inca, Mayan right now. Well, you can take that home and let her impress this I'll, class. I'll go to the source. There it I, is. I, 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 but I, don't I, take it into the school because there are too many kids that have peanut allergies and that would be a bad thing. <laughs> If she was like, look, I have peanut butter. And then, yeah, it's not going to be good for some kid. Um, another one that we had in here was cheesecake. And I thought for sure, I was like, cheesecake has to be ours. Nope, that came from Greece. And it actually was served to the athletes at the very first Olympics in 776 BC. How about it? They said it helped them uh, with their <laughs> athletic improvement. It made them run faster. So they must have had some kind of so sugar. So to Annie Nye, our studio director, who goes to the gym every single day, is the most fit person Cheesecake. on the staff. Cheesecake. Remember, who knew? You're, you're working too hard, Annie. Right. Just sit over there and eat cheesecake. It makes you run faster. <laughs> okay, there's one more that this was the one that I was like, all right, at least we can lay claim to something. Grits. Grits came from Native Americans. They have a long and storied history all the way back to the 16th century. Native American tribes in Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida were the ones that did come up with grits. So and what is it our comedian something. friend, the late James Gregory, used to say? With people from the north, he'd be sitting in a Waffle House and he'd see Michigan plates pull into the parking lot. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's going to be good. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and they said, I did not order these. <laughs> he said first time i just killed me that story they go we didn't we didn't order the grits <laughs> she said nobody does just eat them <laughs> they just come with it the last one we had up there was a sloppy joe and sloppy <laughs> joes although so american you would think that we would lay claim they're traced back to cuba in 1920 so there you go and I'm just reading here, I wonder, you know, I said something about French fries earlier. There's a dispute over the French fry between Belgium and France. Belgium and France. <laughs> <laughs> it's Coffee Country and Cody. Kelly Sutton Entertainment. She's headed to the Grand Ole Opry tonight. Bid red curtain go up 7 o'clock and she'll be there to host. And again, I'll be there tomorrow night with Larry Gatlin and Opry Country Classics. Kelly Sutton, Zach Bennett, Annie Nye, Jeff Roberts, Coffee Country and Cody.